Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Next Talks. And today we have a very fascinating person from Pharma, which is Chris Bone, the VP from Abvi. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you. And I'm looking forward to this discussion. Oh, it's a pleasure. Let's start with our first question, which is uh, seems and obviously you are the Jedi of Pharma transformation. But uh, how do you keep such pace of, of transforming from one company to another, learning, continuously improving, etc.? That, that is probably the highest form of praise I think I've received ever. <laughs> Jedi of pharma, but, uh, and, and, jet, and pharma transformation. I, you know, I think at the end of the day, passion fuels my, uh, my sort of energy and my pace. You know, I think you, you, there's there's no way to really do this without having that level of passion and commitment to really wanting to improve the overall system for the uh, for patients. I you know have uh, I learned very early in my career what my strengths were, and you know, and I try to utilize my strengths to the best of my ability to 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 really make things better and to make things more efficient, to make things more effective, to really connect dots where I can, to really paint sort of a, a picture and and. And, and hopefully provide a vision for the direction that we could head as an industry, right? Um, we know that there, uh, the, the farm industry itself is so ripe for disruption at this point. And you know, we need sort of a new form of leadership to really drive uh, the industry forward. And um, I've sort of uh, taken it as a personal responsibility, um, you know, as well as an obligation to patients to try to improve the overall system. So I think for me, the simple answer to your question is passion. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Next question. We wonder who is Chris as leader? Can you maybe describe him? Who is Chris as a leader? Um, I mean, I think that at the end of the day, my, my sort of uh, simple description of my leadership style is really authenticity and, and servitude. Uh, so I really sort of embrace this idea of being a servant leader really about empowering people, hopefully inspiring people and motivating them to, to achieve something beyond even what they, can, they thought they could achieve for themselves. Um, you know, I think for me, uh, if, you, if you made an analogous to like a, a, a coach or a sports team, I think I'm that person, right? The person who, um, yeah, you develop the strategy for the team, but ultimately what you want to be able to do is really uh, extract the best uh, effort in, uh, from, from each of the players on the team. And, 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 you know, for that, you have to create sort of the environment so that they can thrive. Um, I believe in hiring the best talent we can and, and giving them the space to do their jobs very well. Uh, I don't feel the need to make it about myself, um, because I know it's not about me. I think it's really around this, this sort of shared vision, uh, that we cultivate and that we create so that we can all strive um, to do the best work that we can. So I think uh, for me, um, the, the the authenticity piece comes into play because I'm what you see is what you get. Uh, there's really not a uh, anything beyond that. I don't put up any sort of facade uh, for uh, or pretend to be something that I'm not. Um, I recognize my own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you know, I, I make sure that uh, everyone understands that I have my own weaknesses and flaws as well. So that level of authenticity, as well as that sort of servant leadership, leadership mentality are ultimately what describes my leadership philosophy. And that's what I use to, to guide my teams as well as um, the teams that I may not directly manage, but have some influence over. Nice analogy with a sports coach. Uh, definitely there are some connected dots between sports and business and uh, uh, definitely a very, very nice analogy. Next question. Uh, what moment in your professional career shaped your leadership style? What moment? I think, you know, there's a series of moments. And actually, I, I would say there's a, a sort of a, a series of individuals and, and encounters that I've had, ultimately. Um, you know, I, it probably goes all the way back to like one of my first internships back when I was in my undergraduate years in college. And I had a 
I had my sort of uh, preceptor and manager at the time. She was uh, very much a student of leadership herself. And she noticed that she had this young sort of impressionable student who was uh, sort of obsessed with the idea of learning as much about great leaders as he possibly could. So she really took me under her wing and, and really uh, tasked me as part of my sort of uh, internship experience to, to sort of read leadership articles, leadership books, of some of the greatest leaders, uh, you know, in the world that we knew of, and um, and really taught me how to sort of extract from them some of the some of the key approaches that they've taken, but as well as understand myself because I can't emulate all that they do because they're their own person, I'm my own person. But uh, so I've learned to uh, learn vicariously through the experiences of other leaders whether the great things that they do, the horrible things they do that I can probably try to avoid. Uh, but, um, but I think that that was sort of, the, um, sort of the genesis of this, what I feel like is a leadership journey, this sort of uh, commitment to really constantly improving myself um, as a leader and really thinking through what we need to do. Um, I think uh, I can fast forward to another great mentor of mine. So you can see that it wasn't moments, it was mentors that really shaped my leadership style. And, and, and I, I had another mentor who was great. And she, another woman, um, said that uh, uh, one of the greatest pieces of advice she gave me, she said, Chris, you can be a good leader, but great leaders are those who know how to humanize themselves, those who know how to make themselves relatable to other people. And she said, you can be relatable, right? But, but, but I think that we've all sort of uh, been conditioned to believe that there's a certain profile or certain uh, image that we have to pre present uh, to, to others in order to be perceived as a great leader. And what she taught me was this idea of being, uh, of humanizing myself, of just being who I was. And, uh, and, and people tend to sort of gravitate to that level of, again, authenticity and, uh, and relatability. And so for that, I've stuck to it. You know, I, um, you know, again, it goes back to what you see is what you get. Um, no facade, uh, someone who's gonna be true to himself and true to the passion and, and the things that um, he believes. And so that's what I am. Thank you, Chris. Next question, the ongoing digital transformation or transformation, how did this impact your leadership style? The digital transformation, man, it's just it's, it's the greatest sort of, uh, you know, we're, we're in a digital era and what, what better time to really showcase, uh, you know, or introduce sort of a new leadership philosophy than taking digital transformation, which requires a whole level, uh, a whole nother approach and, and, and mindset. Um, it requires this ability to be agile um, in the way that you think, as well as the way that you build teams and the way that you uh, adjust and adapt to your own sort of strategies and the environment. Um, it requires a level of nimbleness. It requires uh, the sort of change leadership or change agent um, style of leader. Uh, it requires uh, an ability to sort of understand that the world is very much a complex system, right? So you have to understand all the nuances and understand that there's a certain level of chaos or chaos theory that's applied to that very complex system. So I think systems thinking has been one of the uh, sort of key attributes that I think have contributed to at least my ability to be effective and understanding that I can't control or manage every situation, um, but I can try to influence the, the, the sort of situations that I can and, and really uh, uh, hopefully increase the odds that I will get a positive outcome from, from that sort of approach. But I, but, but I think digital transformation is really around understanding that there isn't a uh, sort of top-down or hierarchical approach that one can take to systematizing uh, sort of digital or, or, you know, or if a company is trying to move from sort of the analog state to the digital state or move from uh, bricks and mortar to sort of uh, 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 e-commerce or online presence, you know, these things require uh, uh, different leaders and different mindsets and different approaches. And I think that for me, um, it just happens to be, it taps into all of my sort of interests, passions, and strengths, um, whether it be this passion for improving the overall healthcare system, this passion for technology, this passion for data, 
um, and ultimately this passion for it, change leadership. So for me, it's the perfect storm, but in a good way. Absolutely. Passion is certainly very, very crucial for anything what you try to achieve in life, right? Let's move forward with the next question, uh, questions, uh, which we call quick fire questions. And the first question which I have for you is American or European football? <laughs> <laughs> uh, American football. Okay. And soccer. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, American football. But, 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 I, but I have the great um, a admiration for, uh, for soccer or, or European football. Um, as well, I, you know, these guys, they're, they're tremendous athletes. It's so competitive and uh, it's just a great sport. But, uh, but as someone who started playing American football at the tender age of seven years old, um, I've always been fond of it. I'm a, you know, it's, I'm on record that I'm a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. Oh. Those who really think about American football. So, uh, so yeah, definitely American football. Next question, favorite book in last year? Favorite book is a book called Mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck. Um, and uh, so what she did an academic study where she was trying to understand sort of what motivates people um, to, to, to achieve their aspirations. And, you know, and really what she um, did, I guess, to just kind of give you sort of the Cliff Notes version of the book. Um, there's two sort of mindsets that one can have. You can have a fixed mindset where you are pretty much committed to the way things are. You think that you have, you've accumulated all the intelligence you can, you, you have all the talent that you can actually accumulate. And that ultimately drives how one approaches their life, um, both personally and professionally. Um, but then you also have this sort of growth mindset, which you goes back to your, uh, one of your original questions around this sort of perpetual learning or continuous learning, um, where you're always stretching yourself. You always feel like there's an opportunity to learn, to improve, uh, to adapt. And, um, and I really appreciated that book on many levels because for me, it helped me understand some of my own motivations um, and, and what drives me. And, and definitely I fall into the growth minded, uh, uh, growth mindset, uh, certainly more so than the fixed. Thank you. Next question. During the pandemic, I started to appreciate. Oh man, you know, <laughs> the, the little things, you know, like just I'm with um, the kids, you know, uh, um, just paying attention. I think sometimes, you know, the sort of the downside of being so passionate about the work that we all do is that you can take some other things for granted. And, um, and for me, uh, this whole pandemic and, you know, it's just have an appreciation for life in general uh, because we, you know, who knew we would ever be in a global pandemic um, at this point in our lives, but uh, we have been, and we've lost so many great people um, uh, to the pandemic and, um, so it certainly allows you to appreciate life in general, um, but I've learned to appreciate the, the quality time with, uh, with the family. Nice answer. Next question. Your dream job is? <laughs> the dream job? Oh, man. Um, that's a tough one. I, you know, I, I actually have a love, love, love. I love music. I always thought that uh, if I were, uh, if I were much more musically inclined or talented, then uh, then I would be some sort of big producer at a, uh, you know, producing great music. Uh, you know, who is what I think that uh, the dream job would be. Certainly. So MC Chris. <laughs> <laughs> MC Chris, DJ, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the most impressive city which you visited in the last five years? Oh, Dubrovnik. Oh. I love Dubrovnik. And then thanks to you when you invited me out to the, um, you know, to the next summit. I, I, I love that, the next Pharma Summit. I, I really love that meeting. Um, I love the, the city. I'd never been there. Big fan of Game of Thrones. So it was great to sort of put it into a real context. Um, but, but I love that. I think a close second to that would be Dubai. Certainly Dubai is a great city as well. So next year in May, we, we see each other again in the room. <laughs> yeah, we need to. Fingers crossed. I would love to come back. Yeah. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Chris, Chris was, was really, really a pleasure. Thank, thank you so much, much for this interview. And uh, I said, hopefully see you next year in May in Dubrovnik and next. Thank you very much. Thank you.